Hey class, welcome back. Um, here's another example problem I wanted to solve for you all about using conservation of energy. So what we have in this problem, as you can see in this uh, picture over here, is there's this large pile driver, all right? I actually saw one of these in action when they were building a kind of a bypass on my commute on the way to work quite recently. And what it is, is it's basically a very heavy um, mass that's gonna be dropped on to pound this I-beam that you see down here into the ground. And as we, is shown to us in kind of the description here, that this I-beam is gonna be pounded in point, or 7.4 centimeters, or a distance of uh, 0 0.074 meters into the ground each time that the pile dri driver is dropped. And so it falls three meters before hitting the I-beam and then that kind of momentum that it's built up enables it to pound the I-beam into the ground. And so we're told a few things uh, in the problem statement here. We're told that the pile driver is 200 kilograms. It starts from a height of three meters above the I-beam. The I-beam then um, is compressed 7.4 centimeters into the ground. And because there's a guidance system to make sure this thing stays on track, you can't assume that it's just gonna free fall perfectly where you want it. So there's a resistive friction force of 60 newtons. All right, so what we could do for this problem to get started is we can really think about starting with a free body diagram, maybe looking at point one to point two, and then also looking at point two to point three, because there's sort of two different point or two different parts in the process. So initially what we have is we have that force of friction and mg would be our only two forces acting on our object. And then when it's in contact with the I-beam, we still have mg, we still have that force of kinetic friction, and then we're also going to have a normal force in the upward direction. And just for consistency's sake, I'm going to rewrite this so it looks the same. Cool. So those are kind of the forces that we have going on here. And we're asked to figure out two things. We're asked to figure out, first of all, in part A, we're asked to figure out what is the speed of the pile driver at point two, so right before it impacts the beam. And then for part B, we're asked to figure out what is the average force the hammerhead exerts on the beam. So we're trying to figure out what that normal force is. So those are the two things we're trying to determine, and I want you to use conservation of energy to solve. So let's go ahead and jump in. Again, if you're doing conservation of energy, you always start by writing out the general equation for conservation of energy, which tells us whatever kinetic energy we have initially, which, sorry, uh, let me step back one. Before I write this down, I just want you to understand for part A, what we're gonna be doing, since we're looking at the speed at point two, we're gonna analyze what's happening from point one to point two. So you'll see my subscripts when I do my energy equation are looking at points one to point two. So the kinetic energy at point one plus the potential energy at point one plus any work done by non-conservative forces is gonna be equal to our kinetic energy at point two plus the potential energy that we have at point two. All right, so for this whole problem, what we're gonna to need to do is really define a point, a uh, zero point in our picture here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the top of the beam zero. So when we're looking at potential energy at point two, there's no gravitational potential energy since we're calling that height zero. So now as we go through this, let's break it down. So kinetic energy at point one, do we have any velocity at point one? Well, let's double check. It's being dropped from rest. So no, we do not. Okay. So V1 is zero. So kinetic energy one is zero. Do we have any potential energy at point one? Well, yes, right? We're three meters off the ground, so yes, we have mgh1 worth of potential energy. Is there any work being done by non-conservative forces? Yes, right? We have the friction force, which we're told is 60 newtons, acting over the distance of three meters, right? And since the force is up and the displacement is down, it's gonna be a negative work, so it's gonna be negative force of kinetic friction multiplied by that distance h1. You could put a d in there, but we know that it's just the same three meters. 
So for points one to two, there's no other forces. Points two to three, we also have work being done by that normal force, but we're not there yet. So that's it for our initial energy and our work being done by non-conservative forces. And so therefore that's gonna be then equal to, let's fix that, my screen was detecting my hand. That's gonna be equal to our final kinetic energy, V2, which we don't know, that's what we're trying to find. So that's one half m v2 squared. Plus, do we have any potential energy? We already said that h2 is zero, and there's no springs or anything else, so this is also zero. Nice, so this is actually quite simple, right? All we wanna do is we wanna solve for v2. So v2 then is just gonna be equal to the square root of two times mg h1 minus the force of friction times h1 all divided by m. So if you plug in your numbers for everything that we have, so two times, I'm gonna pull out my three meters because h1 is in both terms, times the mass, which is 200 kilograms, multiplied by 9.8 meters per second squared, minus the 60 newton force of friction and we divide all of that by 200 kilograms after taking the square root if you do the math what you should find is that v2 is equal to 7.55 meters per second boom box worthy so that's part a so now for part b what i want us to do is a similar process but for part b we're going to evaluate from point two to point three. Okay, so now you could start back at point one also, but I'm just gonna pick up from point two. So at point two to point three, let's write out our equation. So kinetic energy at point two plus potential energy at point two plus work done by non-conservative forces is equal to kinetic energy at point three plus potential energy at point three. So do we have any kinetic energy at point two? Yes, we know V2 already. So we have one half m V2 squared. Do we have potential energy? Now, since we called point two zero, I'm gonna show you kind of a tricky part about this problem, but since we called that zero, no, this is zero. You could redefine your zero point for evaluating the second half. I'm not going to just to show you what it looks like to have negative gravitational potential energy, as you'll see. Now, do we have work done by non-conservative forces? Yes, right? We're gonna have a negative work done by friction, Fk times the distance that it moves, which we're gonna call H3. So let's call H3 0 0.074 meters, and it's downward, right? So it's the force times 0 0.074 meters. I guess I could've just wrote H3 in there, but that's okay. Uh, and then we also have work done by the normal force, which is also in the upward direction. So minus the normal force times that same distance, 0 0.074 meters. And now that equals our final energy. Now it's coming to rest. So our kinetic energy, because V3 is zero, our final kinetic energy will be zero. And all we're left with is potential energy. And now since the distance that it's down is actually negative, you're gonna have a negative potential energy of mg times that 0 0.07, running out of room, 74 meters. Okay, so now in this equation, the only thing we do not know is the normal force, right? So you can go ahead and solve. The algebra might get a little, a little hairy, but we're gonna go ahead and do it. I'm gonna make us a little more room here. Maybe I'll divide it through by my H value. So I just get H3 on the bottom of this guy. That'll make it a little simpler. And so if I do that and pop the normal off to the other side, what I'm gonna be left with is that the normal force then is equal to the Mg gets moved over here as the normal force gets moved. So it becomes positive. So you have a positive Mg minus the force of friction and then plus this whole term that's left behind, which is mv2 squared over 2h3. So, making a little more room, if we do the calculation, the normal force should be 200 kilograms times
times 9.8 meters per second squared minus the 60 Newton force and then plus our mass which is 200 kilograms multiplied by our velocity which we just found to be 7.55 meters per second and that's squared all over 2 times our height of 0 0.074 meters you plug and chug and you should get the answer of normal force equals do 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 approximately 79,000 newtons. Boxworthy for sure. So hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you're able to get these same answers that I got. And yeah, let me know if you have any questions. But yeah, that's a fun and tricky, tricky example problem there. Have a great day.